It is, great. Okay, so joint disease. Is it caused by injury or is it caused by environmental? And I thought I'd go through this because it's, it's something that has really kind of become a, this is what is happening in your joints and this is why you can't do anything about it. And it's so sad to hear people saying, well, you're just a freak because you've helped your arthritis and you are able to do things that I've never been able to do, like sit pain-free in a car, walk, um, run, um, dance. All these things I've just never been able to do since my early 20s. Um, and, and now I can. So I'm kind of living my life in reverse. And it really saddens me when people tell me, oh, well, it can't happen to me because my doctor says, it's irrecoverable. You've got arthritis and that's it. So trauma and injury are actually surprisingly have a small influence on the majority of jo joint pain. The more important factors are actually poor posture, mainly in your feet and your back and lack of strength in your, your back, your diaphragm and uh, your hips and, um, and thigh muscles, etc., cetera, and, and your feet. Um, and a classic example was given today by Charlotte of how doing yoga to strengthen these, regain your posture, has had an amazing effect on her back, which is absolutely wonderful to see. The other major effects, and this is something I was really introduced to by um, during lockdown, was when I started to do the um, started to do a um, lifestyle questionnaire on people who had pain. And I basically um, have done more reading with it. And the biggest thing that causes joints to start to rapidly degenerate, i.e. not heal. So you, in, you give yourself a repetitive injury, a small kind of, um, small injury that you wouldn't really think about at all, that, just does not repair and starts to snowball very quickly into um, a major problem. And basically this is then aggravated by poor posture and lack of strength. But that poor repair is actually the biggest uh, cause of that repair, lack of repair is actually from stress. And everyone talks about stress. So what do I mean? 10% of is that environmental, so pollution, pesticides, things like that. 20% psychological, so depression, anxiety, things like that. But 70% is nutritional. And this results in basically a Western diet, so high in um, uh, meat proteins, dairy, um, sugars, and um, fats um, basically result in gut health changes so we have a much much less diverse gut biodiversity than a um, what people would call a more primitive uh, population than somebody in and I say primitive because they're not at all primitive um, but in someone like the, um, the Amazon they have like six times more bacteria diversity than we do. Mm. And what this results in is basically hormonal disruption, which affects our sleep. So we no longer get deep sleep or we get disrupted sleep. We have an inability to maintain a healthy weight. So we yo-yo if we diet or we just gradually put on more and more weight despite reducing our food intake. It destroys muscle. Well, that's really crucial. And we get land up with joint, accelerated joint destruction and pain, plus an awful lot more disease. And so many people don't want to or can't change their diet really radically. Um, it's quite expensive to do because you're using a lot of ingredients, which are not cheap. Um, but also it may not be possible because you may be one person in a family and the rest of the family don't want to do that. So they don't want to go onto a vegetarian diet. They don't want to do all the, the whole grains, et cetera. Um, so it may not be practically possible. They may be traveling a lot and therefore it's really difficult. So, or they have tried in the past 
and they have found they have had lots of symptoms, increased joint pain and um, fatigue, etc. Because they basically they've come from such a low level that as they then rise their nutrition up, they get effectively a lot of um, toxins being released, and that makes them feel worse. But actually, what they need to do is just go over the peak, and actually then they would um, in- feel the benefits. Um, but this is where I found that um, supplements that are um, I'm just going to change that. Supplements that are very pure, so they have been um, tested for uh, pesticides, um, radioactivity, especially the ingredients coming from um, around the Pacific, um, and they are treat the body treats them as a whole food. So they see them as as a something to um, to break down. Uh, that have been clinically child to change body function. Um, and they are treating the cause of the problem, not the symptom, which in my case is pain, results in a decrease in biological age, not the accelerated aging that we see with people with joint pain and other clinical diseases. And the reason why supplementation has such a bad name is basically because. Supplements aren't the same. Most of them come from synthetic sources, so they cause even more nutritional stress to the body. A lot of them have not been correctly tested or cleaned, so they are contaminated, causing more nutritional stress. They are full of fillers to bind them into a tablet or capsule, increasing our nutritional stress. Therefore, they're not treated as a whole food body. They're effectively a foreign agent. And where you have, and they're often in very poor quality, um, and therefore you have to take a lot of them. And that basically, and you're treating the, the symptom and not the cause, leading even more to nutritional stress. So that's why basically a huge number of supplements don't work in clinical trials, because actually they're trying, I won't say crap, because that doesn't sound very rude. That sounds very rude, but they are shall we say, not using the optimum products that could be used. And that's why I went to Synergy, because Synergy actually do what they say. They test so that they can get a, uh, they can actually find pesticides, one drop of pesticide in effect to be 23 Olympic swimming pools. Everything is being, um, has been tested to make sure it works. They even have a mock-up of, the body and they are able to watch the products going through to make sure that things like their probiotics actually are digested and come through the stomach etc into where it's actually really needed and that they are actually treating the causes of the problems and reducing the metabolic problems that are actually causing the symptom so they're treating the real cause um, And that's what I thought I'd share with you today. It's what I'm working more and more with. And so anybody got any questions? Yes, Michelle. Um, I was just wondering because you were you were um, is there just any supplements or uh, uh, in general or is there any specific ones more than others because I mean it's uh, uh, um, again not being an uh, a specialist or, or know anything about that subject you know you read things like uh, um, for example an allergy pills you know at, in, in this time I take a lot of allergy pills and then they are showing the difference as long as they've got the same main ingredients and and you know whether it's a uh, 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 which kind of allergy pills it's uh, uh, don't bother buying that branded expensive ones because the other ones are like just as good as long as they have the same main ingredients I mean how does that apply to what you just said is that true is that not or maybe well, just allergy pills what about omega-3 um, what about you know ex- um, vitamin B well, vitamin if, we take, B, if, if we take something like allergy pills they are basically treating a symptom so they are mm-hmm. stopping you getting the allergy they're not actually looking at why your body is turning against its against something um so when you actually start to look at what that is which often it is a nervous 
system problem or a glandular system problem, um, you actually are able to, the body can cope much more with allergies or it reduces the allergies that the body has to other substances. So basically it's just an overreaction, often in, uh, often in ladies, because our, our system is much more, um, if you'd like to, it's, it's a Porsche compared to a, a man's mini. Sorry guys, but it's just <laughs> the, the biological function we have of producing children requires us to have a, uh, a more um, volatile system, oh, should we put it that way? Yeah, uh, omega-3 is a nightmare. Um, because it really is the majority of traditional sources of it basically come from large fish which have a, a large amount of heavy metals so you've got to be really 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 careful about what you are actually consuming because you really could actually be um hurting you, your own system. you could be killing yourself absolutely um and then you've got to look at uh different sources so yes, there's vegetarian, there's vegan sources as well, um, but also a huge number of the uh, less expensive brands actually take out the constituents of omega-3 and put it together, but don't put it together in actually the quantities we need it. But they're allowed to still sell it as omega-3. So it is, the omega-3 is a nightmare and it really is down to... Um, to testing and making sure actually it's in large enough amounts to actually be helping you so that is the cheap one i'm sorry i wouldn't i wouldn't touch i prefer to go without and use a different source uh yeah or or something like um uh, something like hemp oil or something like that um but then again that has its own minefields because you need to keep it in the dark in the cool etc and it needs to be in a dark bottle because it will oxidate very very quickly um so yeah it's um yeah it, that is a nightmare 